Yeah, and this was really when it started coming together as far as, you know, oh my God, these people, they're into a lot more than just, you know, your typical run-of-the-mill settlement scams. They're into something bigger, at least it, it certainly looks that way. But, you know, started pulling property records um, down in Beaufort County in particular, and a lot of properties that we found were uh, referenced islands. Um and they were all around, you know, Harbor River and St. Helena. And again, for those of you aren't, who aren't familiar with the geography here, St. Helena Island is one of um, three barrier islands uh, down there in Beaufort County, Hunting Island, Fripp Island, Pritchard's Island. When we were talking earlier about parts of the Atlantic seaboard that are ideal for bringing in illicit drugs, this is like the perfect place. It's the perfect place to bring something in because, again, tons of, of water access and easy access to roads. And so what we started pulling were these properties, and again, many of them uh, co-owned by Bowler and Murdoch. Again, um, not any sort of separation here. They jointly owned these properties. And we found nine in particular that were located at what you can only call looking at them on the map, strategic access points and literally perfect places for lookouts to watch out for Coast Guard patrols or local law enforcement boats. Um, you know, just the ideal places to signal somebody, hey, they're coming or hey, we got a boat here or hey, you know, hurry up and get everything offloaded, you know? I mean, literally look lookout properties. And so, one of the things that I found that was amazing was there was one of these properties was a, a little strip island um, off of uh, off of Harbor River, and the island was subdivided into four different uh, uh, tracks. Two tracks had a, had homes on them, like you know beach houses, if you will. But then the the ends the ends of the island were separate properties, and those were the ones that Bowler and Murdoch jointly owned so it's like what the hell are they doing buying this little tip of a you know it just made absolutely no no yeah there's no sense for and again the properties are varying size you know you've got some that are as big as 20 acres um one of them was like an island forest which by the way would have been perfect for stashing um stuff uh various stuff um but then some of them were really small, um, 0.28 acres um, that were basically listed as islands with boat access. Um, and so we started plotting all these properties on the map. But once again, they all looked just like perfect lookout properties. And I started showing them to law enforcement friends. I started showing them to uh, friends, who were, friends who were in the fishing business down there in the low country. Started showing them to you know attorneys who followed these sorts of operations. And they're like, yeah, there's... <laughs> literally only one reason to own these properties, and, the, and that is as lookouts. Um, and then we also found a few properties that that were looked like offload sites. Um, and again, there was one that was located near Village Creek, which is a little uh, uh, offshoot of the St. Helena Sound that cuts into St. Helena from the northwest. Um, and this was again right off of us highway 21 so it was like the perfect place to again offload whatever it is they're offloading <laughs> and have ready access ready access to that highway and so again i i was very careful in reporting on this story you know that i'm not saying he's using these properties for any particular purpose but what is the purpose and there's just really not much in the way of rational explanation uh, other than they're part of some sort of smuggling operation. And then when you add that to the fact he co-owns them with Bowler, who's a guy who's clearly linked to that activity, you know, the connection becomes even even stronger.